Mark, welcome to your first SIGGRAPH. Hi. How do you see the, uh, uh, the advances of generative AI ad meta today, and how do you apply it to either enhance your operations or introduce new capabilities that you're offering? With generative AI, um, I think we're going to quickly move into the zone where not only is, is the majority of the content you know, that you see today on Instagram you know, just recommended to you from kind of stuff that's out there in the world that matches your interests to whether or not you follow the people. I think in the future, a lot of this stuff is going to be created with these tools too. Some of that is going to be creators using the tools to create new content. Some of it, I think, eventually is going to be content that's either created on the fly for you um, or, or, or kind of pulled together and synthesized through different things that are out there. So I, I kind of dream of one day, like you can almost imagine all of Facebook or Instagram being you know, like a single AI model that has unified all these different content types and systems together that actually have different objectives over different time frames, right? Because some of it is just showing you, you know, what's the interesting content that you're going to be, that, that you want to see today. But some of it is helping you build out your network over the long term, right? People you may know or accounts you might want to follow. And these, these multimodal models yeah. tend to be, yeah. tend to be much better at recognizing patterns, weak yeah. signals and such. And yeah. so one of the things that people, people always, you know, it's so interesting that AI has been so deep in your company. You've been building GPU infrastructure, running these large recommender systems for a long time. Now yeah. you're now well, you're a little slow on it, actually, getting to GPUs. Yeah, I was trying to be nice. I know. Well, <laughs> tell everybody about the Creator AI and AI Studio that's going to enable you to do that. Yeah. So, so we actually, I mean, this is something that we're we're you know we've talked about it a bit, but we're rolling it out a, a, a lot wider today. Um, you know, a lot of our vision is that I don't think that there's just going to be like one AI model, right? I mean, this is something that some of the other companies in the industry, they're like, you know, it's like they're building like one central agent. And, and yeah, we'll, we'll have the meta AI assistant that you can use. But a lot of our vision is that we want to empower all the people who use our products to basically create agents for themselves. So whether that's, you know, all the many, many millions of creators that are on the platform or, you know, hundreds of millions of small businesses, um, we eventually want to just be able to pull in all your content and very quickly stand up a business agent and um, be able to interact with your customers and you know, do sales and customer support and all that. So the one that we're, that we're just starting to roll out more now is um, we call it AI Studio. And it basically is um, a set of tools that eventually is going to make it so that every creator can build sort of an AI version of themselves um, as, as sort of an, an, an agent or an assistant that, that their community can interact with. There's kind of a fundamental issue here where there's, you know, there's just not enough hours in the day, right? It's like if you're, if you're a creator, you want to engage more with your community, um, but you, you, you're constrained on time. And similarly, your community wants to engage with you, uh, but it's tough. I mean, there's, there's just there's limited time to do that. So the next best thing is, is allowing people to basically create these artifacts, right? It's, um, it's sort of it's an agent, but it, it's, you train it to kind of on, on your material um, to represent you in the way that you want. I think it, it's, it's a very kind of creative endeavor, almost like a, like a piece of, of art or content that you're putting out there. And you know, it, it's, it's going to be very clear that it's not engaging with the creator themselves, but I think it'll be another interesting way, just like how creators put out content on, on these um, social systems to be able to have agents that do that. One of the interesting use cases that we're seeing is people kind of using these agents for support. Um, this was one thing that, that was a little bit surprising to me is one of the top use cases for meta AI already is people basically using it to role play difficult social situations that they're going to be in. So whether it's a professional situation, it's like, all right, I want to ask my manager, like, how do I get a promotion or a raise? Or I'm having this fight with my friend or I'm having this difficult situation with my girlfriend. Like, how, ha like, how can this conversation go? And basically having a, like, a completely judgment-free zone where you can basically role play that and see how, how, how the conversation will go and, and get feedback on it. Um, but I, a lot of people, they don't just want to interact with the same kind of you know, agent, whether it's Meta AI or ChatGPT or whatever it is that everyone else is using. They want to kind of create their own thing. So the Llama is, is genuinely important. We built this concept to call an AI factory, uh, AI foundry around it uh, so that we can help everybody build. Take, you know, a lot of people, they, they, they have a desire to um, uh, uh, build AI. 
And it's very important for them to own the AI because once they put that into their, their flywheel, their data flywheel, that's how their company's institutional knowledge yep. is encoded and embedded into an, an AI. So they can't afford to have that AI flywheel, the data flywheel, that experience flywheel somewhere else. So, and, and so open source allows them to do that. But they, they don't really know how to turn this whole thing into an AI. And so we created this thing called an AI foundry. We provide the tooling. We provide the expertise, uh, Llama uh, technology. Uh, we have the ability to help them uh, turn this whole thing uh, into an AI service. And, yeah. and then when, when we're done with that, uh, they take it. They own it. We, the output of it's what we call a NIM. And this NIM, this, this Neuro Micro NVIDIA Inference Microservice, uh, they just download it, they take it, and they run it anywhere they like, including on-prem. And we have a whole ecosystem of partners uh, from OEMs that can run the NIMS to uh, GSIs like Accenture that, that uh, we've trained and work with to create Llama-based NIMS and, and, uh, and uh, pipelines. And, and now we're, we're off helping enterprises all over the world do this. I mean, it's really quite an ex exciting thing. It's really all triggered off of uh, the Llama open sourcing, the, the Ray-Ban Metaglass, um, uh, your vision for, for uh, bringing AI into the virtual world uh, is really interesting. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, okay, a lot to unpack in there. Um, the segment anything model that, that you're talking about, we're actually presenting, I think, the next version of that here at, at, at SIGGRAPH, segment anything two. Um, and it is it now works, it's faster, it works with, um, oh, here we go. Um, it works in video now as well. I think these are actually cattle from my ranch in Kauai. Um, but By the way, these are what they're called delicious, Mark's cows. Delicious cows. Delicious yeah. Mark's cows. Um, there you go. Yeah, another. Next time we do, so Mark, Mark came up to my house and we made Philly cheesesteak together. Next time you're bringing the I'd cow. I'd say you did. I was more of a sous chef. The fun effects will be able to be made with this, and because it'll be open, a lot of more serious applications across the industry too. So, yeah. I mean, scientists use this stuff to, you know, study um, like coral reefs and natural habitats and um, and kind of evolution of landscapes and things like that. But I mean, it's uh, being able to do this in video and having it be a zero shot and be able to kind of interact with it and tell it what you want to track is, um, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool research. I think what you're going to end up with is um, just a whole series of different potential glasses products at different price points with different levels of technology in them. So I kind of think, um, based on what we're seeing now with the Ray-Ban Metas, I, I would guess that displayless AI glasses mm -hmm. at like a $300 price point mm -hmm. are going to be a really big product that yeah. like tens of millions right. of people or hundreds of millions of people eventually are going to have. Um, and then, you're going to have super interactive AI that you're talking to. You yeah. Have visual, you have yeah. visual language understanding that you just showed. Mm -hmm. You have real-time translation. You could talk to me in one language. I hear it in another language. Yeah, and then the display is obviously going to be great, yeah. too. Yeah. But it's going to add a little bit of weight to the glasses, and it's going to make them more expensive. So I think right. for there will be a lot of people who want the kind of full holographic display. But there are also going to be a lot of people for whom um, you know, they, they want something that eventually is going to be like really thin glasses. And so you guys know when, when, when Zuck calls it H100, his data center of H100s, there's like, I think you're coming up on 600,000. And, and they're... We're good customers. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get the Jensen Q&A at SIGGRAPH. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Zuckerberg. Thank you.